Welcome to the fascinating tale of our planet's dance through the seasons. Earth is quite the performer, twirling on its own axis, causing days and nights, and orbiting around the sun, bringing us different seasons. But there's a secret ingredient, Earth's tilt. Let's see how this cosmic trio creates the magic of seasons. To grasp the transformations, we closely observe two cities. Ottawa in Canada, located up north, and Wellington in New Zealand, positioned down south. Additionally, we track Earth from various perspectives. On the left, we depict Earth's journey in orbit around the Sun. On the right, we showcase the top view and the side view of Earth. For now, imagine Earth without a tilt, standing straight like a little cosmic soldier. Now, let's let Earth twirl around the Sun. As Earth orbits, months change, but both cities get 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night every single day. Equal days and nights mean temperatures don't change much, so no season. Ottawa is as cool in July as it is in February, and the same goes for Wellington. But what if we bring back Earth's tilt? Does it make a difference? Let's find out. We start on March 21st, when Earth's tilt is neutral. Everywhere, including Ottawa and Wellington, gets 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. Now, let Earth continue its journey, and let's see how the tilt affects our two cities. It's April now, the northern hemisphere where Ottawa is tilts a bit toward the sun. Ottawa's days get longer and warmer. It's spring. Meanwhile, in Wellington, down south, days get shorter and cooler. It's fall. Let's keep going. It's May, and the northern hemisphere tilts more toward the sun. Ottawa's days keep getting longer and warmer, while Wellington's days get shorter and cooler. June 21st arrives, the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere. Ottawa has its longest day, and it's officially summer. Down in Wellington, it's the winter solstice, the longest night, and winter begins. Let Earth keep moving. In July, the northern hemisphere is still tilted, but it's starting to move away from the sun. Ottawa's days get shorter, but it's still hot because days are still longer than nights. Wellington's days get longer, but it's still chilly. The same story continues in August and September until September 21st, the autumn equinox. Days and nights are equal everywhere. It's fall in Ottawa and spring in Wellington. Keep going. Now, the northern hemisphere starts leaning away from the sun, moving into October and November. Ottawa's days get shorter and it gets colder. Ottawa's days keep getting shorter until December 21st, the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year. Winter has arrived in the northern hemisphere. Wellington, on the other hand, has its longest day, and it's the start of summer. After this day, the northern hemisphere starts leaning back toward the sun. Days get longer, but it's still cold because days are still shorter than nights until the first day of spring, March 21st. In Wellington, it's the opposite. It's summer, but days start getting shorter. March 21st again. Earth's tilt doesn't favour either hemisphere. Days and nights are equal everywhere. It's the spring equinox in Ottawa and the autumn equinox in Wellington. Moving forward, the seasons continue their cyclic pattern in both hemispheres. As we've witnessed, they consistently unfold in opposite fashion, all thanks to the interplay of Earth's tilt and orbit. It's truly a mesmerising cosmic dance.